Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to Endless Ocean Blue World. They have to be morning when they're watching this. Do you ever think of that? Uh, who watches stuff in the morning, though? Everybody watches stuff in the evening. I mean, that's what I do. Whatever. Get a job. I have a job. My job's awesome. Well, it's like what everybody watching this in the morning. Unless you have oh. a late night job. Maybe you're Tears. Tears, are you watching this right now? Hi, Tears. <laughs> uh, well, we're back at Nine Ball Island. This hasn't changed. Nope. Still our island. Hey, yep. Jean Luc, how you doing? John Eric. Whatever. <laughs> and Look, every Frenchman is Jean Luc to me. <laughs> but Jean Luc is Picard. He isn't French. Bird. Bird. Yo, I found this bird. I don't think it's even native to here. I think it's native to, you know, North America. Oh, there's a bird in front of me. I didn't see that. I just had to look down. Wow. I don't know I missed that. <laughs> this is a bird a moron. Does it have rabies? Oh my god, I think I can speak bird. Not again. Ah, who knew birds could fly? Damn. I, I, I just heard that bird speak to me, Oceana. Yes, chase after the bird. <laughs> yeah, let's just chase after this tiny little bird. This doesn't sound highly improbable and unlikely. Yeah, find out one of the islands in the atoll. Yeah, it's... There's, there's only like a million of them. Ah, that'd be great. Make a full afternoon of it. <laughs> Let's go do that. All right. It's a nice boat. How many footer would you say that actually is? Mm. You've got eye for boat. You got boat eye. Yeah, but not for measurement. Hmm. Still that fender out. You need to learn to let it go. Also, you may recall that some time back we actually looked at the first quest for the Gatama Atoll. Yes. That means that this is going to trigger now, and we get a chance to take care of that too. It's not proper radio syntax. Look, you could call things terrible, regardless of radio syntax. Yeah, I'm just... Oh no... Damn tourists. Yeah, yeah why not? Yeah, I could do it. Jason yeah. a bird. Yeah, I guess he could come with Oceana. I mean, I'm just probably just gonna be shooting fish with my zappy gun, but you know, whatever. Okay. All right. I'm just gonna take Mandelbrot. <laughs> he loves bluebirds. Manta ray? Uh, oh, a manatee? Yep. That's very improbable, but yeah, whatever. But whatever. They also live here. Uh, evidently. There are magical creatures, Zorak. You know this. It's true. I and mean, I guess, you know, we've been seeing things mostly that made sense for the area. Having a few outliers that they and just And if kind they of... don't, they call them on it. Yeah. A few outliers is fine, I think. You know, it's it's unlikely, but it's not impossible. We, not, we do... No, it, it, it's... We they, live they are in... kind of in the wrong ocean entirely. Uh, but, you know, Panama Canal. No. Red, we live in a post-Coelacanth world. Lots of crazy things could happen. In fact, lots of crazy things can happen right where this game is taking place. Keep in mind, Coelacanth, we thought, oh, coast of Africa, whatever. And that's after we thought it was extinct for, you know, ever. And then we discovered some uh, in, you know, Southeast Asia. 
Complete surprise. Who knew? Alternate explanation for me? Nuclear testing. What, it turned... No, they were, they were testing their effects on manatees, and they brought some and dropped them here. Or they were the ship's pet. Not quite. But whatever. Or's parrotfish. Uh, another day, another parrotfish. I really like parrotfish. They're neat fish. Yeah. They, they just look neat, they, they hang out neat, they're, they're, just, they're just neat. It's fish. It's fish. A uh, neat thing about the Boer's parrotfish is that when it's sleeping, it covers itself with a mucous membrane to uh, make it so, you know, predators can't smell it. Except for when they do smell it. Then they're well, fucked. it's not perfect. Nothing is. If there was such a thing as a perfect defense for, you know, predation, you know, things would never get predated upon at all. The world would go to chaos. Everything would be in shambles. I don't think that's how it works, but whatever. Oh, it's the ugly little gobies. You're ugly. Bye. That's their house. They live there. But hey, it's Mandelbrot's family. Ah... <sighs> Good old common dolphin. They're pretty looking. I like them. Yeah, they, they, their colors are just fantastic. Those patterns. Yeah. So the game makes a note. Their little trivia for it. It's it's literally this. When people think of dolphins, they usually think of the bottlenose dolphin. But as its name suggests, the common dolphin is the real representative dolphin. The dolphin amongst dolphins. You know, it's it's the dolphin that other dolphins would like to go to the bar with, you know. Have a have a nice drink. I like that dick orca. <sighs> Orca's kind of like the uh grumpy cousin or something. You know, you, you kinda interact with them sometimes, but you don't want to interact with them too much. That looks pretty cool there with all the all the do ball thingies. Yep. The Got some pulsar balls. things attached to them. Uh, nothing that, works like that. That by is the way. how everything works. <laughs> it's not how things work. Though, admittedly, there is something of a little bit of science behind the concept of the pulsar. I, I know some people brought this up, kind of like, what the hell are they even attempting for there? But there, there is an idea of electromagnetic healing as a concept. There, there's actually two ideas, one being complete and utter bullshit, and one that's a bit more realistic. Island. wonder why it's called Dolphin Island. I wonder. <laughs> I really wonder. Could have called it Purple Queen Island. They could have, but, you know, I, I presume they named it above the water, and they might not have seen the Purple Queens up here. See any blue birds? Nope. Hmm. Hey, John Eric. We're swimming. <laughs> We're healing things with electricity. So electrotherapy is the the name of the real thing, the real medical concept. Basically, you can use electricity to trigger muscle contractions, right? You yeah. Know, yeah. Your, your muscles are driven by electrical signals, so you can kind of trigger things in cells to kind of increase muscle flow, blood flow, which can help repair tissues. And if your tissues have atrophied, hey, bowel mouth guitar fish, you know, you can kind of help repair tissues a little bit that way. That's kind of the general idea of electrotherapy. Also, you can use it to reduce pain in some areas, and you can do that weird... guitar fish doesn't seem to care about your food. <laughs> I, I don't think he has any interest, no. No, oh, it's the pumpback. Yo, I'm here with my baby still. Wait, where's the baby? He's down on, He's down somewhere on the right. Is it? Uh, yeah, I saw it down there. Did you? Yeah. Fortunately, we're, we're in a little bit of a rush. See, there's... Oh, there actually. it is. Okay, we're good. We have to cover a fair bit of distance to actually heal all these animals at once. And uh, so we have to kind of truck a little bit. We have one 
thing with how the air works in this game is that you use up more air when you're further down. So when you're trying to do things like this, it's often better to stick towards the surface a little bit. You know, you use less air that way. That makes sense. Yeah. It's less stress. Less pressures and whatnot. But there's so many fish down there. That's unstressful as hell. <laughs> it's true. But it's actually the case often, like, say, if you ran out of air when very deep down on underwater, as you approach the surface, even if you don't have air in your tank, as the air inside the tank decompresses due to the reducing pressures, you actually get more air in your tank as you go up. So even if you use up all the air in your tank, you know, as you think is all your air, as you approach the surface, you will actually get another additional breath of air out of your tank, typically. I'm bad, Rass. Oh man, Donut Reef. Fucking fat ass manatees hanging out with donuts. Ah, we're gonna see donuts swimming around. <laughs> Maybe? Who knows? So, I'll talk about the legitimate electromagnetic healing. There's also, of course, the unlegitimate, which is called uh, electromagnetic therapy. Which is basically the idea that you can electrocute anything and use crystals and orbs or whatever to heal anything and everything. I'm sure you all have heard of that kind of thing on the internet. It's utter crap. It doesn't work that way. Those clownfish are called orange skunk clownfish in the European version, which makes them just sound filthier. <laughs> it does sound like a dirty name or something. It's like if you called roses stink blossoms. <laughs> ah, leatherback! Wait, zoom spot, then leatherback. Up oh, scene, it's just a stupid cherry grouper. Ah. <sighs> Screw <laughs> Cherry Grouper, Leatherback. Child, it'll fight you! Now, I absolutely love the Leatherback Sea Turtle. It is probably my favorite marine sea turtle. Obviously, there's not hugely many of them to compete against, but it's really cool and I really like it. This tang are just kind of... Well, you know... Stealing the show here. The, they got nothing to worry about. Let's learn a little bit about the Leatherback. The leatherback sea turtle, Dermochelis coriacea, also known sometimes as the loot turtle, is the largest of all living turtles, and the largest non-crocodilian reptile besides. It is the sole living species in its genus and family, and it is morphologically very distinct from other modern sea turtles. For one, it lacks a bony shell. Instead, its carapace is covered by skin and oily flesh. For two, it dwarfs the others by far. For three, its mouth is... As I was saying, it is the only sea turtle without a bony shell. While its family, Dermochelidae, is a close cousin of Chelonidae, the family of all other extant sea turtles, it is an even more close relative to the extinct family Protostegidae, which included Archelon, the largest sea turtle ever at 13 feet 4 meters in length, and at an estimated 4,900 pounds 2200 kilograms in weight. By comparison, full-grown leatherbacks can reach over 7 feet, 2.2 meters in length, and exceed weights over 2,000 pounds, 900 kilograms. They achieve this size on a diet almost entirely of jellyfish, occasionally supplemented by the odd tunicate and cephalopod. They undertake incredible migrations between their breeding and feeding areas to find this food, the largest of any sea turtle, averaging around 3,700 miles, 6,000 kilometers, each way. Leatherbacks, like all sea turtles, lay their eggs in the ground on sandy beaches. These beaches are very specifically selected, and their conditions are extremely important. In fact, the temperature inside of a sea turtle's nest actually determines the sex of the hatchlings. At 85.1 degrees Fahrenheit, 29.5 degrees Celsius, an equal mix of male and female hatchlings will occur in a nest. Any warmer in the nest will produce mostly females, while any cooler it will produce mostly males. Despite their lack of a bony shell, a full-grown leatherback has almost no known predators beyond the odd orca or great white. This has a lot to do with their size, not to mention their propensity to chase down anything that harasses them. While nesting, they are somewhat more vulnerable, and have even been observed being predated upon by jaguars in South America. Leatherbacks have the largest global distribution of any reptile species. They are found in every ocean bar the Antarctic, even well into the Arctic Circle, forming three genetically distinct populations. Their large body size and fat deposits allow their range to often dip into very temperate and cool waters that other reptiles avoid, 
driving them as far north as Alaska and as far south as the southern tip of New Zealand. Leatherbacks also have some other unique adaptations amongst reptiles to handle cold temperatures. A big one is the fact that they have an extremely high activity rate. Leatherbacks spend as little as 0.1% of the day resting. Their constant swimming creates a lot of endothermic heat, which when paired with very helpful circulation systems and their fat allows them to maintain a very high temperature compared to the surrounding water. These adaptations also help them in achieving other fascinating extremes. The leatherback is both the deepest diving reptile at 1280 meters or 4200 feet for up to 70 minutes, as well as the fastest moving reptile. That's right, the fastest reptile in the world is a fucking turtle. Eat it, lizards. They've been clocked in at reaching over 22 miles per hour, 36 kilometers per hour in the water. They are also unfortunately listed as critically endangered by the IUCN. The issue is some countries really like their eggs. They're considered a delicacy or an aphrodisiac even. The adults are also often caught in fishing nets unintentionally or killed by boating traffic and their breeding beaches are quite often compromised. Another big issue is plastics. Remember that the leatherback eats pretty much only jellyfish. Unfortunately, they often confuse plastic bags with their delicious prey. It's estimated that one third of adult leatherbacks have ingested plastic. This debris can easily kill sea turtles by blocking their digestive tract or coming to rest in their gut, causing them to starve or even sexual maturity much slower. Some individuals have been found with almost 11 pounds, 5 kilograms of plastic in their stomach. For reference, the average plastic bag is around 4 grams. So in other words, that's 1,250 plastic bags. That's a lot of bags. As a result, the leatherback sea turtle is one of the most rapidly declining large animals today. Thankfully, there are a large number of conservation efforts involved in protecting them to try to turn the tide. Trade of the animal is highly outlawed in many countries, and much is being done to make fishing less harmful to the animals. Much of their nesting beaches have been declared protected areas by local governments. Hell, the Malaysian Fisheries Department is looking into cloning the animal to replenish their own rapidly declining population. So let's all hope that the leatherbacks manage to pull through. It'd be a horrendous shame if our world lost such a unique, marvelous animal with such a fucking creepy mouth. Ah. God bless you, Leatherback. Oh, you got a little cutscene here, huh? Yeah. Discovered another subzone here. It's the Cabbage Patch. Ah, it's a puffer there. Well, who, who else would hang out in the Cabbage Patch? But you know, one of the least edible fish in existence. Creepy old ladies. Yeah, creepy little. Creepy old ladies or little Asian women. Yes. Little little old Asian elderly grandmothers. I like that mental image. Thank you for that. Now here's something we never showed off. Let's 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 go and surface a bit. Once I find a good position. Yep, uh, that, uh, that works. Uh, uh, hey. You go ashore here. Yeah, so what, what, let's do it. Let's, hopefully we'll see if, what we see. Maybe we'll find the blue bird. Maybe we won't. Who wants to know? Ah, the surface. Now, obviously, when you're in the ashore, you can walk around, check stuff up, and you don't have to worry about losing oxygen. Yay! You're a little away from home here, Galapagos Marine Iguana. And you're a vegetarian, so you probably should be eating this it. fish nope. anyways. Uh, uh, whatever. <laughs> eh. Eh. Stop They're feeding them those! They're probably actually omnivorous. Maybe. I don't know. Uh -huh. I think they're vegetarians, but herbivores. Oh. Albatross. Stellar's albatross. Oh, I, I believe you know a little bit about these. Hell yeah, I do. Albatross are large seabirds found throughout the southern oceans and the northern Pacific. Albatross are very large for flying birds. The great albatrosses have the largest wingspan of any living bird known today, sometimes exceeding 11 feet. That's pretty goddamn big. 
They're highly efficient flyers. The only time they ever really flap their wings is during their initial takeoff. They're adept at using dynamic soaring predictable weather patterns to cover insane distances with very little exertion. Albatross can easily cover almost a thousand kilometers in a day without flapping their wings once. They're able to do this due to the sheer tendons in their shoulders which locks their wings in place without any muscle expenditure. Albatross feed predominantly on creatures found at the surface of the water, either diving to get it or in some instances just grabbing it mid-flight. Examination of squid beaks they've regurgitated shows, however, that the squid are far too big or swim too deep for them to get normally, suggesting they have either scavenged them, either from fisheries, the vomit of whales, or the die-off from regular squid spawnings. I'm only telling you this because that's kind of gross. They're colonial animals, nesting on what is predominantly islands or outcroppings free of terrestrial mammals that would eat their sweet, delicious eggs. Albatross are easily one of the longest-lived birds, reaching over 50 years old in some cases. They lay very few eggs and even after reaching sexual maturity may not breed for 10 years, so this isolation is very important for their nests. Younger albatrosses do, however, return to the breeding colonies to, of all things, practice. Albatross have elaborate rituals for mating, various calls, dances, and synchronized motions that young albatross practice and learn through trial and error. Over time, as they return to the colonies, they will dance with several individuals, slowly decreasing in number until only a single partner is left. The two birds form a lifelong pair bond. They lay a single sub-elliptical egg in a bowl-shaped nest. If the egg does not hatch, be it due to predators or it being accidentally broken, the pair will not try to breed again for the remainder of the year. In Samuel or Taylor Coleridge's The Rime of the Ancient Mariner, an albatross is the central emblem. From this poem, the albatross's place as a metaphor is originated. Someone with the burden or obstacle is said to have an albatross around their neck, the punishment given to the mariner who shot the albatross in the poem. Partially due to this poem, there is a myth that all sailors believe it is an ill omen to kill an albatross, when, in truth, they are regularly killed and eaten throughout history. Of the 21 species of albatross recognized by the IUCN, three are critically endangered. 16 are threatened and the remaining two are near threatened. The leading causes are plastic debris being swallowed, feral introduced species, and commercial longline fishing. Albatross and other seabirds are attracted to the set bait, become hooked on the lines, and drowned. It's estimated 100,000 albatross a year die this way. If you've never actually seen an albatross, they, they look like gulls, and you think they are if you just look at them through pictures, but they're, they're big birds. They really are huge. Albatross. Well, I learned a lot about the albatross. Thank you, Red. Eh. I'm a sailor. I don't. I don't think that's a thing. That bird. I don't think. Shut I up! I saw the bird. Shut up and look at that bird. Walk faster. <laughs> look. Out of the way, you. Nadine takes a leisurely stride when she's, you know, walking around. You found a blue bird. Tweet! Tweet! I definitely can't talk. Yo, check me out in Greece. Later, Holmes. I thought you said later, hole. Which was weird. Bird wouldn't be that rude. I left you a present. <laughs> How is that bird carrying gloves? Oh, no, don't even bother. It's magic. It's magic. It's not magic, it's, it's just a magical blue bird. It is magic. It's, it's intelligent and it is a credit card. Isn't that, in its own way, kind of a magic? No, it's just financially sound. Well, what does Oceana think about this whole thing? Eh, it's pretty good. I like it here. It's pleasant. It's blue. It's wet. The birds are talking to me! <laughs> it's a little bit concerned about that, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I, at least I'd be concerned if, you know... Let's go heal that manatee. Yeah. Let's wrap up this quest and do our good deed for the day. No. Oh, oh god. I recognize that animal. Cuttlefish. Cuttlefish, 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 cuttlefish. Ah! <sighs> Oh, I love cuttlefish. Everybody loves cuttlefish. Broad clubs. They're probably the most popular cephalopod when you get down to it. This game actually does a thing where if you actually look at the tides and dive at certain times, you will find their eggs and their young at the appropriate times. 
I wonder why cephal why of all cephalopods the cuttlefish is the most popular. Is it because of the giant head and the tiny little arms? They're neat. And they can change colors all cool. Would you say, Red, go on, as, you know, an objective gentleman of the sea, that the cuttlefish is the most kawaii of the cephalopods, would you? Zoraka, I want to punch you in the mouth. That's what I think. <laughs> as a gentleman of the sea, I want to punch you in the mouth. <laughs> ah, Well, that that is behavior I would expect of a sailor, so fair enough. So, fun thing about clownfish, you know how you'll see images where it's a big, like, parent one and a bunch of little ones? They're usually unrelated. The little ones just kind of float by like plankton and end up there. They just sort of adopt them. Adopted, or is it a grand coincidence? It's kind of a symbiotic thing. Uh, I want to touch the birds, but I need to go. I'm in a rush. I can't touch bird. Gotta go. Gotta go fast. This is probably the most time pressed you really get with these quests ever. Yeah. Just because it's, it's it's an early one and you know it's they're kind of spread out across this uh, atoll. It happens. Yeah. It just forces you to dive more, and hey, that's rather the point of the game, I think. Just relaxing. Relax of vision. Manatee! Yeah, it's a manatee. Those are the worst looking donuts I've ever seen. Maybe they're only Geary. Oh god. Really? We're, we're gonna bring up Pokemon translations? Nope. <laughs> you did that, sir. I think you uh, did it and I just got it. I could've it. been talking about something else. <laughs> you were. Anyway! Manatee! Manatee. Kind of improbable. No, I think we've all heard of manatees. They live in Florida. Typically not here. I saw one the other day. It was great. For some reason, they're both here in, you know, the north a little bit. Also in Manoa Lai. How mysterious. That's where we were in the first game. Yep. So at least they recognize that it's atypical, and they just, they kind of hand wave it, but, you know, that's fine. I'm fine with that. Oh, uh, micro atoll. That's kind of neat. Yep. Let's heal that manatee. Now, which do you manatees feels especially ugly? That's not a manatee. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> they need so much healing. Look at no. them. They're so sick. They're so sick. It's nature's way. Ah, okay, that one looks good. And there Pulse should be another that three. Manatee. Oh, there he is. Um. Oh my god. You got out of the water and they ate another plastic bag, didn't they? Yeah, I think it reset. God fucking damn it, Zorak. Why did uh, you let them out of here? Oh, god! The blue bird red. I was excited to fight a blue that bird. That blue bird fucked you! I'm so mad right now! <laughs> the blue bird, right? Oh my god, I'm just so disappointed! Oh, uh, if this island isn't incredible, I'm gonna fuck. Oh, I'm just gonna off myself! There better be something worthwhile on this fucking island! Damn it, Zorak! <laughs> I'm sorry, I wanted to find the bird. Oh uh, my penguins! god. Tiny little penguins! Oh, oh they got babies! Oh my god. Tiny little penguin Fairy babies! Penguins. Oh my god, yeah, there's babies! Give them fish! You will give him fish! Oh. Ah, you can't be upset when you see penguins. No, you cannot. It makes it all worth it, really. I like the way they walk. What? What's that over there? Oh my god. Oh my god, Zorak is a dog! A dog? Hey, it's a Labrador. Oh my god. What Give are you him doing a fish. here, Labrador? Give him a fish! Eh, uh, let's, let's, let's ditch it. Yeah, we're rescuing it. That's kind of, that's, that that's, that's cruel, yeah. Yeah, I found a dog. Come here and pick up this dog.
How do you get the boat so close? That's shoal water. We carried it over. Well, I figured, but... We got a dog! Yes! Screw healing those fish and shit. We're, we're, we're going to go check out the dog. The sick fish can wait. Hell yeah, dog. Join us next time for fucking dogs. Could have phrased that better. <laughs> yeah, I probably could have.